Here's the setup just to kind of show what it looks like when a transistor is operating normally into a current limited load. It's a regular load. It's somewhat inductive. It's got a lot of supply inductance because I've got some pretty good cable length coming out of here. Uh, and besides, it's an inductive resistor. And all that this entails is I've just got a little resistor to discharge the gate and I've got the wires leading up to a 9 volt battery so I can just flick this on and that's enough to generate a pulse and you can see the current is coming in, it's fused, it goes through the load resistor goes into the drain, the source goes right to ground, ground plane and I've got a 10 milliohm shunt resistor here which just to make sure the signal is good I've got this kind of sort of Kelvin wire coming up over it to make sure it cancels out mutual inductance if possible and then I'm just probing at the end here. And of course when this is working correctly what you'll see is the voltage on the drain drops, the current through the shunt and through the entire circuit really goes up to some limited amount depending on the resistance here which happens to be about 4 ohms so it should be out of 12 volts it should be 3 amps. I've got my power source over here it's a 12 volt lead acid battery it's probably good for more than a few hundred amps, even with the 10 gauge cables that are coming off of it. Those red-white cables go up to the circuit. And when I flick it on, this is what I get. I get a little turn-on transient. This is the current flow. There's a turn-on transient, and then it ramps up, and then it holds steady at about... Uh, that's 30 millivolts, which over 10 milliohms is 3 amps, so that's right. This is the drain voltage. You see it just falls and stays pretty much rock steady at z just about zero because it's a pretty beefy transistor. That's out of five microseconds for per div which is pretty typical. I mean if you're doing like a switching power supply that's like on and then it would already be off, on off on off kind of a thing. If you had a switching power supply that was on and then it stayed on you might have some problems. So let's see what happens when that happens. Alright I've replaced the load resistor with just this twisted pair coming over to this electronic fuse circuit which I just created uh, pretty recently. I'll have some more to say about this. Eh, nice janky diode on there but it still needs some work but it's gonna be pretty nice I think when it's ready. What it does is it's just an electronic fuse. It turns on if it experiences an overload it turns off. The current limit and response time are adjustable. In this case, I've got them both turned up to maximum. I've got a trimmer here, and these trimmers are max and yeah, max. So that's fully loaded as well as I can do it. So this thing should be able to draw as much current as it can. Now, because I've got this electric fuse in here, this fuse should not blow, nor should the fuse that I have on here for protection. What it should be is that when this thing turns on, it draws so much current that this thing turns it off. This would be like if you have a switching supply that decides it doesn't want to switch anymore, but it's got something upstream that protects it. Something electronic other than a fuse. So I'm going to start this. You can see it draws red. Actually, maybe you can't see that very well on the camera. It's kind of bright. But there's a... it's on. And if I look at the waveform here I can see I've got full voltage on the drain and no current and now when I flick this it's gonna see a whole lot more peak current out of there and this thing's gonna open in about 5 or 10 microseconds and we can see the result here the transistor uh, the fuse was on here the transistor turned on and you can see the current is rising because there's pretty considerable inductance in the supply again there's a lot of cables there this voltage also is rising the drain vo voltage because it's not the best transistor it's uh, like 20 milliohms or something and then before that voltage goes too crazy it just shuts off boom it goes down there's some ringing and then it's off and that all happened within about 12 microseconds, 10. 
11 microseconds, which is what the fuse should do. And that peaked up to, um, that's out of 100 millivolts per div, is going to be 10 amps per div, so I was doing 10, 20, 30, 40, about 45 amps peak, which is about the rating of the transistor. So actually it turned off just about right in time. Now, if I didn't have this electric fuse in here, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's not going to be pretty. Well, let's see what that does. Now this time I've removed the electronic fuse. I've just got a jumper in here. There's only thing limiting the current is this 15 amp fuse and the transistor itself. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, and it re-triggered so I didn't get to see the actual transient. Well, let's see what happened to the circuit. I've got... the gate resistor here. Measures as a whole lot less than 1k ohm. So there's something fishy here. If I go to voltage, I think I'm going to measure about 15, uh, 12 volts across the fuse here. Oops. That's negative. Yeah, that's pretty much negative 12 volts. So the fuse is open. The transistor's got some resistance to it. Now what's interesting is the gate is not a complete short. So it's probably that it did not just burn through in like the catastrophic Chernobyl kind of way. If I go from ground to drain, and I look at the diode drop there, you see it's uh, Plus, minus. So that's in the diode direction, so that should be the normal body diode. This particular device is supposed to be more like 0.4 volts, or 0.5, so that's definitely fishy. If I reverse this... It's 0.2, so it's even lower, which doesn't make any sense. So it's definitely... the transistor... there's nothing wrong... nothing left with the transistor. Now what's funny is, if I do this, it still actually switches. It's just that it draws a whole ton of gate current and it doesn't turn off fully. What's happened is, part of the transistor has fused, as in melted, destroyed, but most of it is still there. So as long as you deliver enough current to get the gate voltage up, there's going to be this sinkhole where all the where the gate's shorted through, where it's just dumping a lot of current, but the area around it is still okay, and as long as you can get the voltage up there, you can still actually use it, sort of. But as this, I doubt this thing would even switch very well, because it's not going to be switching off, and during the time that it is switching off, it's going to be dissipating so much power due to that little shorted out hole that it's probably just going to fail on the next cycle kind of a thing. Or, if there weren't even a fuse here to begin with, or if it were a weaker fuse, you'd have some problems. So, no fire today. The fuse did its job. The fuse is a safety protection device, primarily intended to protect wiring, so you don't get fires and big stuff like that. But one thing a fuse does not do and will not do is protect the circuit this transistor is fried, you cannot use your circuit anymore, you have to fix your circuit if you protected it with just a fuse. And this is why you use circuits that are naturally protective and stable, so that they work as well as they can until it just goes really bad.